Hello everyone and welcome to another lesson on fundamentals of robotics. Dr. Maddie here and I'll be your instructor today with another lesson. In this lesson, we'll continue with the tools necessary to express robot motions and we'll become familiar with the screw motion in robotics. We'll also see how to define uh, exponential coordinates for robot motions. This is the first lesson on the series of lessons on a screw theory and its applications in robotics. More lessons will be posted in the future. So be sure to subscribe to our channel, follow us on social media, and visit our website to never miss a lesson. Are you ready for today's lesson? Let's get started. Screw theory in robotics provides a foundation to express robot motions and states that any robot configuration can be achieved by starting from the home reference frame and then integrating the constant twist over a specified time. A twist refers to the angular velocity and the linear velocity in a compact form. We will learn about twists in the next lesson, but for now, just remember that integrating a constant twist over time will give us the robot's configuration. Therefore, we can say that all configurations can be achieved by a screw motion, uh, which is a spatial rigid body displacement that comes from the Scholz mozi theorem and kinematics. This theorem states that every displacement of the rigid body can be obtained by a finite rotation about and translation along the fixed screw axis, which is identified here by the special letter S. This rotation and translation is called a screw displacement. This motion is like the motion of a screw that simultaneously rotates about and translates along the same fixed axis. The positive direction, as we saw in the previous lessons, is according to the right-hand rule. There are two good things about using the screws to express robot motions. First, using the screws uh, to describe robot motions provides a global description of the motion that doesn't suffer from singularities due to using local coordinates. We discussed these singularities when we studied the three parameter representations for orientation like Euler angles and Rolpici angles. As a quick reminder, the global coordinate frame is some chosen coordinate frame with a known origin, whereas the local coordinate frame is a frame in this global frame that the robot exists in. For instance, suppose that a mobile robot is moving in a room. The global coordinate frame is somewhere in this room, usually a corner, and the local coordinate frame is on the robot itself. Describing the motion relative to this local coordinate frame can suffer from singularities where the mechanisms are locked and lose degrees of freedom. For instance, local representations of orientation like Euler angles and Rolpici angles suffer from singularities where the solution will not always exist for the inverse problem where we want to find the set of parameters for a given orientation. We talked about these singularities in the corresponding lessons. On the other hand, the screw theory also provides a geometric description of robot motions that makes the kinematic analysis very simple in comparison to other methods like Denovit Hartenberg that we'll see in the coming lessons. For now, just know that the pose of the end effector relative to the base frame can simply be found by the product of the exponential formula and the screw theory. In this formula, S1 to Sn represent screw axes expressed in the fixed base frame when the robot is at its home position, uh, and theta1 to theta n are joint variables. M is the end effector configuration when the robot is at home position. 
Unlike the conventional methods like Denevit Hardenberg, this method doesn't require link reference frames to be defined, which is a great lifesaver. Professor Daniel Martins from Federal University of Santa Catarina made a great presentation on the importance of screw theory for mechanism that puts all of this in a more articulate way. I'd like to thank him for this great presentation. Hello, my name is uh, Professor Daniel Martins. I'm from the touristic island of Florianópolis in the southern part of Brazil at the Federal University of Santa Catarina. Uh, first, I w would like to thank you, Maddie, for the invitation to explain about the screw theory, uh, its applications and the importance of screw theory for the robotic uh, field. Well, uh, well, we we have some uh, competitors to screw theory. The, the the first one should be the the Navi Hattenberg convention, but uh, they are quite limited in this in the sense of understanding what really happens underneath the the, the robots. Here we have some some robots here. Most of them are serial, and when you have a serial robot like this one or this one, the procedures are straightforward using the Navi Hattenberg, but whenever you have a closed loop, things go a little bit complicated. So, uh, and the other part that I want to, to talk is that uh, screw theory is uh, quite important for the designing of new robots and new mechanisms. Whenever I, f I talk about robots, I could say mechanisms. That is a broader uh, concept that includes all the robots as a subset. Well, the screw theory uh, and other types of uh, representations, I can, we can say that there is some complexity and some simplicity in, inside. Uh, on the left side, you have here a robot, a special robot, uh, with some uh, kind of uh, complexity, but whenever you use screw theory, you have here a single reference frame. So we have in this case one reference frame only. On the uh, right side, you have a representation using the DH notation, and you can notice that there are a lot, lots, and lots of systems, coordinate systems, lots and lots of frames of reference. So despite the right side being a, a most planar robot, this uh, system is quite uh, complex to model. Then we had has some it's a straightforward manner to, to, to do, has only four parameters that's uh, interesting, but there is so many frames that the, the, the things gets a little bit complicated. And the other point is that Denevi Hattenbeck and others are most concerned with the kinematics of the robots. So, Whenever you go in the rabbit hole of uh, screw theory, you understand you have a, lots of positive ex externalities. You have a, a mathematical um, approach, you have mathematical tools to solve, and you think about the problem of uh, path generation, designing the, the joints, the, the position, the relative position of the joints, Perpendicularity, parallelism, so uh, yeah, and you have some kind of kind of beauty inside. That is whenever you realize that you are really understanding the uh, the under the hood of the robot using a screw theory, you have an extra layer of positive externality, that is the integration between kinematics and statics. Most of the other types of representations, like uh, Denevi-Hattenberg and uh, Hansen, Denevi-Hattenberg and so on, 
they are only focused on the kinematics. But screw theory uh, is a dual set. You you really have an uh, understanding what you are free to move, that is the kinematics, and what you are constrained to move, that is the aesthetics. So you gain two in a one. Here you have a mechanism, it's not a, a robot, but it's the same approach, that uh, is a, a lots of, it, it's a automatic transmission uh, of a, a common vehicle. Uh, so you have this representation, and here we can solve with a single graph the kinematics, and on the uh, on the middle here you have the statics, and all of them you can put in a, such a kind of a, uh, a matrix matricial approach and solve it. Well. Other derivatives of screw theory is this um, deeper consciousness that you have of what you are really designing. So for design a new robot, a new mechanism, you have to have such a kind of a deeper uh, perception of the reality in order to do not overconstrain, do not have loser parts. So in this case I have a, a, a robotic bed, it's like a a mechanism, but it's a, a robot bed has several degrees of freedom. The robot bed has some kind of uh, topology, and having in mind how this topology uh, evolves, how the kinematics of the joints and the statics of the joints, you can derive uh, varieties, some simpler varieties, some more complex varieties, and you can design new kinds of robots. In this case, a new type of robot. Uh, robotic bed, and in this sense, you get you have uh, uh, an extra layer to, to do new patents and new innovation. Well, the, for a short introduction, uh, this is my uh, contacts here. You can contact me whenever you want, and uh, I, I will thank again Maddie for inviting me, and I will be open to any questions if you want just contact me thank you now that we learned an introduction about the screw theory and its applications in robotics let's see how we can define the exponential coordinates for robot motions by now, we are familiar with the exponential coordinate representation for orientations, and we know that it's a three-parameter representation of orientation and parameterizes the orientation using the unit axis of rotation omega hat and the angle of rotation theta about this axis. Then the multiplication of omega hat at theta is the exponential coordinate representation of the orientation. We also learned about homogeneous transformation matrices that are great tools to express rotations and translations in a compact 4x4 matrix. Another possible representation of displacement is a six-parameter representation called exponential coordinates that will be the topic of this session. The six-dimensional exponential coordinates of a homogeneous transformation, T, can be defined as this equation, where S is the screw axis, and theta is the distance that must be traveled along the screw axis to take the frame from the initial configuration, I, to the configuration, T. In order for us to mathematically define the screw motion and the screw axis, we need to first study the concept of velocity in robotics, and we should become familiar with the angular velocities and the linear velocities that will be the topic of the next lesson. To conclude this lesson, let's see some applications of screw theory that is an excellent tool for research in robotics. The screw theory can be widely used uh, in robotics research. Here I want to share with you the application of a screw theory in my own PhD work on steerable needles. 
Screw theory can be used to describe the motion of continuum soft robots like steerable needles. Steerable needles are compliant needles that can be steered to a target location by rotation of the needle about its axis and translation of the needle. The screw theory can be used to describe the motion of steerable needles in terms of an angular rotation in a plane as a function of insertion velocity and the ability to reorient the plane in which the needle is traveling by twisting the needle at the base. As an example, consider fractured directed steerable needles. Fractured directed steerable needles are a type of steerable needles in which the direction of the tissue fracture is controlled by either the, t uh, the tip of the needle or the water jet, and then the steerable needle follows the path. A screw theory can be used to describe the kinematics of these needles accurately. In the coming lessons, we'll discuss more details about how to use the screw theory uh, to describe motion. That's going to wrap up today's lesson. I hope that you have a good understanding uh, of an introduction to screw theory and its applications in robotics. In the coming lessons, we'll go deeper into screw theory in robotics and we'll see how we can use it to describe motions. Stay tuned for the next lesson and don't forget to leave us feedback. We do appreciate your feedback to improve our lessons. Also, share the lessons with your friends who are in the same path as you to master robotics and mechatronics. Send us any questions that you have to our email at support at Thanks again for watching and see you in the next lesson. Bye!